March the 10th, 2021. Guys, after two years, CERN has started to wake up. They've added some things to it. It took over that period of time to act so that it can actually operate at greater uh, power levels. If you remember two years ago when they shut down, they had achieved 14 tera electron volts not gigavolts but tera volts and uh, they were in the collision they were running about uh, 6.5 to 7 tev per beam and as they collided and they were measuring luminosity and everything again about 14 tev now they've amped up the initial beam which is uh, kind of the what they're calling the heart of the cern system and the initial beam powers up several different sectors we're going to look at an article that uh my wife Tina has put up on our website this morning. A lot of good articles come up there every day or so, so you need to check that out. We'll look at this one. But first, this is live. Notice your timestamp at the top right, 10 3, or that's uh, March the 10th. Again, this is uh, on the, um, I guess it would be the Franco Swiss border at CERN in Europe. And the timestamp is UTC at 172653. This is called the cryogenic page, and that's at the top left, and that means the cooling system. And the red boxes and green boxes and yellow sections in the top, these are different sections of the collider. And the large loop is 17 miles itself, but uh, each section has to be brought down very cold, as cold as outer space, to allow operation at these high powers. And as you see that, um, each section start to turn green then it is reaching the cooling uh, temperatures necessary to operate at full power now you'll see this after even it's going to take them about eight months to achieve full power into next year but we'll start seeing the ramp ups the um, smaller power beams thing like things like that now it's just been dead screens for again two years and the graph in the bottom of this you'll notice this is temperature measured in k and uh, you've got one two three four five six that's your scale here now right here around 1.9 right under two is where they like for each of these sections to be dropped as far as the temperature if anything starts spiking above that and as you see here they're trying to bring in two other sections to get it down cool it off it takes a long time a lot of um uh, energy and, and actually also to do that but is it you'll see CERN start kicking off the line they start dumping the beams when this cryogenic section starts overheating right now they're trying to bring everything down into this 1.9 level and you can see they have uh, these sections 45 12 23 24 and section 78 and you can see how this is laid out in uh, the different groups here but they're at 1.9 K notice that s 56 section 67 section 81 are well above it and uh, section 67 is at 305.3 so uh, all of this will have to be brought down and it's going to take a while to do it but I want to go over and read from the article that's up on our website at bpearthwatch.com it's interesting and this is our website. Most of you know it, but it's bpearthwatch.com. Guys, the CDs are in stock. So are the water filters. Don't get caught without clean water again. Also, there's a special on the solar panels now. That they're at the 100 watt rigid panels like I use. They are about $100 or so a piece. Now, if you buy three, you get one free. So it's 400 watts. If that's plenty for a small home i mean a small like mini house or a camp or something like that now i have 12 of the panels in a different video i'm going to go over that but right now that's a definite hundred dollar savings buy three and get one of those one of these acupower 100 watt rigid panels not the flexi panels they just don't hold up as well you never get the full power like you do out of the rigid ones but the article that we're talking about if you come under over to the right current news Come down here to where it says LST report, and this is a section of CERN that they're starting to crank up. CERN's oldest acceler accelerator, excuse me, awakens, and you click there. There's several other articles. Notice this very interesting information coming in, but uh, let's click on that, and that link will bring you to fizz.org. 
org right here physics ls2 report march 10th 2021 this is a section of that ls2 and it says a new septum magnet after its installation in the proton synchrotron and uh, credit cern images synchrotron ps is the beating heart of cern's accelerator system situated at the center of the complex it feeds particle beams not only to the large hadron collider the lhc but to many of CERN's major facilities, including the antimatter factory uh, and the east area. Klaus Hank, head of the proton synchrotron operation team, chooses his words carefully to describe CERN's oldest accelerator still in operation. On March 4th, during the veteran accelerator, uh, excuse me, on March 4th, the veteran accelerator received its first particle beam after a two year shutdown during which it underwent significant upgrades to prepare it for higher luminosity, an indicator of the number of collisions. Within CERN's accelerator complex, protons extracted from a hydrogen gas source are accelerated in the brand new Linux 4 and in the PS booster before injection into the PS, when the, when th which then feeds either directly or indirectly the vast majority of CERN's accelerators and experiments the new LINAC-4 and the upgraded PS booster now provide the PS with a beam accelerated up to 2 giga electron volts, a 0.6 giga electron volt increase compared to the last beam. Now remember, this is the heart of the system, and at 2, um, you'll be at 2.6 giga electron volts, but that's in the main beam, and that's not the accelerated beam in the large LHC because we're you're dealing with going from giga electron volts here in this case 2.6 to above 14 tera electron volts a difference between 20 gig gigabyte and a terabyte same in electron volts so this is the kicker this is the boost it says to ensure that the 60 year old ps can withstand the higher energies the accelerator ring has been fitted with cutting edge equipment in recent years including refurbished magnets new beam dump systems and beam instrumentation devices and upgraded radio frequency and cooling systems. In the cryogenics section that we open this video with, that is the cooling section. So although everything's kind of getting geared up, we're, it's going to be an interesting time. It says this injection of the first beam into the PS marks the end of more than 10 years of research and development focused on this equipment as part of the LHC injector upgrade project. Months of dry test runs without beam and system checks ensure the success of this important milestone on the road to broader reactivation of CERN's accelerators. The injection is not a rocket launch. We do not push a button and watch as the PS roars to full capacity. That's what we've been talking about. Everything has to be uh, tuned back in. We inject protons gradually tweaking settings and fixing things along the way until we reach a satisfactory energy level, explains again Klaus Hank. The injection of the first beam will be followed by a commissioning period of a few months to fine-tune the accelerator specs while the rest of CERN's accelerator systems gradually emerges from its two-year slumber. You know you're going to find some kinks in the, uh, after that much uh, downtime, especially when you start adding newer and more powerful components. These machines and the many experiments they are connected to will benefit from the higher energy levels during the next experimental run starting next year. With higher energies come more focused, denser particle beams, which translates into more precision and experiment results. But it isn't until the advent of the high luminosity LHC that the upgrades of the PS and the broader accelerator system will show their true potential. The sturdier and more efficient rings will be key in delivering a final luminosity in the LHC that is expected to be 10 times higher than previously. If you remember, uh, they had reached peak luminosity just before they shut down two years ago. We covered it pretty much uh, at two or three times a week on what they were doing. And uh, we saw some effects on the magnetic shields of our planet. If you remember that. We'll keep an eye on that also. But you're dealing with... Um, CERN is a, at the the level it was two years ago, it was 100,000 times 
the energy that was, excuse me, the energy generated by CERN, the magnetic field, was 100,000 times stronger than the Earth's magnetic field. That tells you what a delicate balance things are in sometimes. But we're going to be watching that and a lot of the other events. This, it can also be measured uh, with ground current. And it's interesting that the location of CERN, where it's built underground, again, from Franco-Swiss border, that um, it lays within the northern hemisphere, but it's right on one of the underground magnetic lines. They call ground field inductor lines. It's one of the names for it. And uh, it's like they can tie into the energy that's as we see the solar winds get stronger. We see the shields react to that and more energy pour into it. It seems like CERN was reaching some of their peak period during that time. So that's an interesting correlation. They don't ever talk about it, but I did definitely notice it on the space and the uh, magnetosphere instruments and their satellites. Well, guys, we're watching it. You watch it. Uh, it's going to be an interesting time. Be safe.